reason I'm defending freedom of speech because that's how people with different opinions settle their opinions in a civil society. The presence of Nazis and white supremacists assaulting people at your protest, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I don't like Nazis. I'm speaking out the way I'm speaking out because I think this is a route to no violence. And violence is lurking. And you can say that that sounds like a threat. There was no violence at our protest, though. I just asked, would you refer to me if it wasn't for this law? And I asked you to refer to me with they, them pronouns, would you? And your answer was no. Not if I was compelled to. Hello, everyone. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is Hugo and Jake. And today we're beginning a journey that we hope you will all join us on. And that is a journey of Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. This is a self-help book written by Canadian psychologist, philosopher, uh, University of Toronto, if you're from Toronto, uh, Professor Jordan B. Peterson, JBP, the G for short. Um, yeah, so we are doing this. If you are a fan of Jordan, um, you probably might not like this because I think he's wrong about a lot of things. But, at the very least, we hope if you also are open to ideas as you should be, like we saw in the clip of Jordan earlier saying that free speech is how people settle ideas, well, then at the very least, hear what we have to say. Then I guess uh, this is the, uh, the marketplace of ideas, Yeah, and we're on credit. So, today what we're going to be doing, we're not actually going to be looking at the book itself. Next time we're going to start with that. Today yeah. we're going to be doing sort of an overview of... An, over, an overture, if you will. Of how Jordan Peterson sort of became famous. Uh, and initially, his big break, as it were, uh, ended up being over this Canadian bill, uh, C-16, which involved their <clears throat> sort of uh, anti-discrimination law. Yeah, it's it's uh, if you're an American, it's kind of the protected classes. Yeah, it's the, it's the equivalent um, governmentally. Um, and so the clip you saw was uh, Peterson uh, very, getting surprisingly vocal um, compared to how he acts nowadays. Uh, he's usually very, I'm gonna say measured. He's usually very calculated. Calculated um, about about this bill um, because he misinterprets it. And uh, I get we just kind of picked uh, uh, this thing they did with uh, CBC because I think it gives the best per like little overview. So we'll be taking clips from that and responding and stuff. Yeah. So uh, we just want to get into it. Yeah. Uh, Professor Peterson, let's begin with you. Uh, why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm against the use of of le legislation to determine what words are that myself and other people are required to utter. Okay, here Jordan Peterson makes it uh, appear that the C-16 bill was going to in some way enforce him uh, to make him use the pronouns, the preferred ones of his students, yeah. the transgender ones specifically. There, thereby altering his free speech, which for the record, I would be against. Yep. Um, that's not what this bill is at all, though. No, if you actually look at the wording of the bill, we'll put some of it on the screen. It actually entirely... All it does is take that protected classes and add transgender people and people of different mm -hmm. gender identities and how they choose <coughs> to gender themselves and adds them to that protected class list. So it's the same as, like, you can't discriminate against black people or people... Due because, to their skin color. Sure. Uh, or whatever. Or people who are gay because they are gay. You can't walk into the streets and say, kill all the N-words, kill the Jews. Uh, it's the same shit. Um, it's just expanding their verbiage to include trans people um, or those that just have a different gender identity altogether, just to kind of cover their bases. Yeah. Um, because you can't just you can't not give someone a job because uh, you think they should have a ding ding when they have a hoo ha. But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? This is a tactic that Jordan Peterson, and as we go on through the series, I'm sure we'll look at several other interviews he's oh, yeah. done over time. Again, we said earlier, he's very calculated. He does this all the time. He never says more than he has to in any given moment. And this is part of his strategy, it appears. It's not like he ever comes out and says this directly, but as someone who's parsed a lot of this material over the past yeah. week or so, mm -hmm. in any given circumstance, he's compartmentalizing what he says so you never get the entire picture of how horrible his worldview is until you put all the puzzle pieces together yourself. And, so, and, and luckily, all the puzzle pieces are intentionally disparate, so you have to go to a speech, to a book, 
to another speech to a Patreon live stream. Right. So, if you just read the book or you just read that, it sounds maybe a little bit reasonable, but when you put it all together and you look at the context and look at the, some of the quotes he's had, it paints this picture of a person mm. who is very against basically anything that has come out of postmodernism. Mm. He said as much. He's not, and that's not wrong in and of itself, but his reaction to basically people wanting... I don't know, to be treated equally, to be treated yeah. fairly, is to say, no, fuck you, you can't tell me what to do. Which is not a reasonable response. That's a child's response. It's an, it's an extremely conservative worldview, and one that is very much coached by religion. And um, if you don't... If, if maybe you're a fan of, of Jordan's work, and you're also a fan of our work, and you think, uh, Hugo and Jake, um, I don't get that just at all. By the end of this, I promise you will. I promise you will. Even, like, you had a short discussion with a Jordan B. Peterson fan not too long ago, and you were like, hey, uh, what was, it? was he sexist right here? Is that what he was doing? Um, At the time, yes. Yeah, this yeah. Was, this was in regard to the New York Times interview, which we'll get to next time, because uh, there's plenty of quotes in here that are just awful. Yeah. How about this? Uh, you want me to... Should just I read? read one. Just read Let's one. See. You know you can say, well, isn't it unfortunate that chaos is represented by the feminine? Well, it might be unfortunate, but it doesn't matter because that's how it's represented. It's been represented like that forever and there are reasons for it. You can't change it. It's not possible. This is underneath everything. If you change those basic categories, people wouldn't be human anymore. That They'd be something else. They'd be transhuman or something. We wouldn't be able to talk to these creatures. That's in regard to his, uh, and we'll talk about this next time in the book. Um, he has a lot to do with uh, archetypes and mythical stories and how they <laughs> reflect reality. Um, from what I've parsed again so far from the book and from what he said, I don't think Jordan Peterson believes in objective reality. Yeah. He might believe it exists, but that's fairly irrelevant to how he decides to operate within the world. He believes yeah. that uh, certain things, these mythic ideals, the idea of Eve in the garden, the idea of Pandora's box, the idea of women being these agents of chaos is in stories because it is intrinsically... It is intrinsically true of a biology and nature, and that is what it is, and women should know their place, basically. And yeah, I'm not only the one saying it, that, it's, by the way. It's, it's not... <laughs> Let me we, get one more quote. Okay, well, we don't have to go into it too deep, but uh, just to give you kind of a... Think about this um, as if... Uh, there's a really great Twitter account, as if it were a... An, is it Jordan B. Peterson or a prophet of Islam? <laughs> and I mean, it. it's really... Like, if you just look through it from a, just a different lens, not a white guy from Toronto... But uh, just just any sort of like a like um, a part of the caliphate, whatever. You really it really sounds terrible. Yeah, here's something he said, for instance, about uh, the recent attack by Alec Minnison, uh, who drove through Toronto and he killed some people with his car. Yeah, he said. <laughs> Violent attacks are what happens when men do not have partners, and society needs to work to make sure those men are married. He was angry at God because women were rejecting him, Mr. Peterson says of the Toronto killer. The cure for that is enforced monogamy. That's actually why monogamy emerges. Yeah. Um, enforced monogamy. Yeah. Now, he'll, he'll go into backpedal about this, by the way. Yeah. Um, saying, and he does this very often, saying stuff like, oh, well, maybe that's not right, but... Um, I, I think it might be the best way or, you know, he'll, he'll very clearly, he says, he asserts a lot of things without ever like fully endorsing them if, if there's a way. And he'll go on here after he just said no about, um, calling people or their pronouns. Um, this is actually one of the few times, and this is early on, this is right, right when he starts being like in the eye yeah. of the public. Um, he actually does assert right here. No, I would not call someone by their pronoun. Um, which by the way, let the, the, the MAGA hats and the Dave Rubin fans and, the, you know, just the, the rest of them uh, got very, very excited about this. <laughs> the thing about that, too, no one's saying you can't do that. Right. We're just saying if you choose to not call people by their preferred <clears throat> pronouns, yeah. you're an asshole. Right, and that's fine. You can be an asshole. That's okay. Just I Just don't gotta... expect us to not call you out on it. Right. There's social currency, and, and this puts you in the red. And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are, there are artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose viewpoint I do not share.
First of all, as we said before, again, this law in no way makes it illegal to misuse people's pronouns. It's all about actual, like, discrimination or actual harassment, the same as it would be about any other protected class. It's right. just adding transgender people to that list. And, and again, it, uh, I understand, as a person who, uh, I, I value free speech, as a person who says a lot of crazy shit sometimes for Absolutely. comedic purposes, I think it's important. And he very clearly misinterpreted what this law meant and then got upset and because he's the way he is, he spoke out. But there's no way Peterson in the interim has not been corrected on this issue, even by this point, because these people are here to correct him. So I don't know how you could remain ignorant. I just don't know, I just don't know how you can keep it going. I, I, I'm thinking something. Recently I heard someone say something about ideologues. Hmm, mm. That's ringing in my ears for some reason. Mm. We have a graphic to show our audience at home, uh, just some of the pronouns uh, being used or asked to be used as alternates. Z or Zim, uh, Z or Here, Z or Zir, also Hey, uh, or A rather, and Per. This I wanted to bring up specifically because in regard to this sort of bill, or when you're talking yeah. about people's preferred gender pronouns in general, people tend to bring up this Tumblr, Z, Zim, yeah. Him, she... Yeah. No, for one thing, the vast majority of the people on this planet are not transgender. You're probably not going to run into that many right. in your life in the first place. If you do, 99.9% .9 of those people are just probably someone who says, I was biologically born a male, I feel female, so I'm right. going to attempt to this, live my true self. This this often does not represent the trans community, but the gender fluid community. Sure. For the record. Um, which is fine. And if someone, like, honestly... If someone says, hey, I prefer, you know, they as a pronoun, I'm okay with that. Don't, now, but if I, if you are dressing what I consider and what society considers as, like, like a, just a dress with flowers on it. Let's say the most stereotypical thing. If you're dressed with long hair and a dress with flowers on it, and I'm in customer service and I go, oh, thank you, ma'am, or whatever. I'm clearly not being an asshole. It's just like kind of programmed in our heads. Sure. And and you, as someone who is a, a non-binary and you want to be considered they, uh, I'm not being an asshole. Just let me know. And I'm fine with that. And like Jordan Peterson and a lot, mostly his fans are like, I don't want to not be an asshole. Like, why? Who gives a shit? If are your name, it's, it's literally like someone goes, oh, thanks, Stan. And you're like, my name's Jim. And they're like, no, it's Stan. I'm calling you Stan forever! Based on what I'm parsing, again, from what I've read of the book yeah. so far, I gather Peterson and a lot of people who follow him aren't the most secure people in the world, and that has something oh, really? to do with it. Yeah. Um, a lot of this has to do with, um, unironically, the term toxic masculinity. Yeah. There is, I, I know that you might, maybe you, you cringed a little bit. Maybe you think maybe, oh God, are Hugo and Jake going to go hang out with Steve? Uh, no, he wouldn't have us. But <laughs> uh, there, there really is a thing. Like um, I was uh, listening to the radio the other day and um, the local sports radio network does a spotlight on soldiers that return from yeah. active duty. And I, t I tweeted this. Um, basically he said that he didn't know how to cope with feelings. He grew up in a, in a society that was like men don't show their feelings in the military. Um, partially it's, it's pragmatic because you don't want people breaking down in the battlefield, but they also have give them no coping mechanisms for PTSD or anything sure. like that. So basically he came back and his only lashing out, his only way to express himself was through anger most of the time. Mm -hmm. And he said he's had to relearn and reprogram and I thought, that's just so sad. Yeah. And he's making excuses for these people to say it's okay, you're supposed to act that way, as opposed to saying, no, emotions are things people endure. Like, we, we can all... So I find this harmful just in that sense. Yeah. Um, and that's... When I when someone says toxic masculinity, I think you should think about, like, how um, men are supposed to act. It mostly has to do with emotions and the representation of those. It's interesting to me because the main people who tend to say, like, toxic... The minute someone mentions toxic... Toxic masculinity. And it's been used wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's been used wrong. Absolutely. It's been it's been, like like uh comic books are toxic masculine like no no they're comic books. It's okay if something is hyper masculine I know. like as a medium, but like you know people aren't always that. Sure. What I find interesting is people who rally against the most are people who are men's rights activists. Yeah. And one Jesus. of the things that they mention a lot of the time, and this is an actual issue, is the number yeah. of suicides Absolutely. and people with the and men with depression who don't seek out help without recognizing that the things that often yeah. lead to that suicide and not seeking out help and not having mm -hmm. an emotional support net around them 
are by definition toxic masculinity, and you can you can call it something else if that term just makes you angry. I think for it some does. Reason. It makes a lot of people cringe. Like that's you, fine. I have an initial reaction to be like, Ugh. but that's the term. That's it's he, a it's a term that I think is 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 valuable. It's the it's the term that sociologists use to talk about this shit. It's a term. It's not. I mean, every term's made up, but it's right. a term that's used to describe something. Sure. And so, um, yeah, that's that's kind of. Um, dealing with that is kind of the antithesis of how Jordan Peterson operates. Yeah. Again, a lot of his stuff, it's <coughs> looking at postmodernism. Yeah. I'm not the first person to say this. Yeah. But it's looking at postmodernism. Postmodern and, cultural Marxists. And I can, and recognizing issues, because, don't get me wrong, there are issues with postmodernism. Oh, we have yeah. a lot to work through. But instead of saying we need to come up with a new way to move forward, a new yeah. way to reframe our thinking as a society to be more inclusive for everyone, he says, fuck that, let's go backwards, reverse 1960s as fast as possible. Extremely conservative. It's, and it, that'll be displayed as we move on. They are saying it boils down to respecting their human rights. I don't think it boils down to respecting their human rights. I think that it's an imposition on freedom of speech that's being implemented at a legislative level. Again, not being compelled <laughs> at all by the law to do this. All the law is doing is added, adding these people to the protected classes. He just doesn't want to call people by their preferred pronouns because it makes him uncomfortable for some reason. And that is more paramount than their... I don't know. Yeah. Humanity? Well, I don't know. <clears throat> well, I think it's important. Um, we're talking about... He deals with um, masculine and feminine, um, both symbology and just like uh, social... Um, I don't know. This, I guess the, the, the way we act so sociologically um, between people now. And adding that facet, trans people or just gender fluidity in general tears apart that book a little bit. Yeah. So admitting that, like, people aren't masculine or feminine, which, <laughs> which, and, and I think we can all agree, like, you, you probably lie on one side of the fence or the other, yeah. even if you're trans. Um, because, I mean, most people, mo and again, um, you, you might think, uh, we're a little crazy here, but, you know, gender is kind of like whatever society feels gender is. Sure. Right. So, like, I am viewed as a man, I identify as a man, and I'm straight, which is a shame because apparently there's lots of dicks out there for me, but uh, because I have a beard and I wear, you know, I have a deeper voice and uh, I have short hair and I, you know, have, you know, I, I don't wear female clothes. Yeah. But, like, if all of us wore dresses all the time, that would strip away something that's considered fem Does that make sense to you guys? Sure. So... Like just just bro like reaching this this kind of concept with him is is something he can't really get around because he can't sell books. <laughs> I genuinely think I genuinely think Peterson is a I don't think he's unintelligent. I, no. I, I just I just think he has an agenda and he he's he's literally said he found out how to fem, uh, how to uh, monetize um, uh, hardcore feminists. Sure. I mean, he, he understands what he's doing. I don't think he's an idiot. This isn't like a Ray Comfort situation. This isn't a Ken Ham situation. This guy is genuinely trying to uh, bring up, and, and good for him with the timing of this, with like Donald Trump and that entire movement underneath yeah. that. You know, like conservatism is the new punk rock. Infowars is popular for some reason. Uh, he, he's very much taking those, you know, the, the cream of the crop of those, like the intellectuals. Yeah. He's like, come over here. Uh, we're we're liberals, uh, but we're not really. Yeah. Like Dave Rubin. Here's a direct quote from the book, yeah. by the way, in the introduction. <clears throat> I've always thought that if people really noticed what I was teaching, there would be hell to pay. You can decide for yourself what truth there might be with that concern after reading this book. And there's a smiley face emoji. He put a smiley face emoji, which you probably know. can't see. Yeah, well, it's in there. In the book. So, yeah, he knows what he's doing. I also think that if there was a naturally evolving solution to the linguistic problem that's being posed by a small fraction of the transgender community, that people would have already adopted it. We've never had a situation in the usage of English before that required legislation to produce a transformation in the manner in which people spoke. Yes, we have. We have absolutely had that. We added... 
uh, African Americans um, to protected classes in North America. I mean, that just because Canada's not America doesn't mean that's not happened. And I'm sure, I mean, just the fact that this was added to protected class legislation in general means that's also happened in Canada. For the record, C-16 um, made this a federal level law. Uh, in Ontario, where he lives, this was already a law in that province, which is ba it's a state, basically, uh, if you're from the states. Um, it was Obergefell v. Hodges before that. Does that make sense? Like, wait, states had legalized it, um, but some hadn't, and then federally it was, was recognized. This is the same exact situation, just in Canadian um, politics and parliament and stuff like that. And again, I feel weird reiterating this again. <laughs> this has nothing to do with forcing you to use other people's pronouns. You should still use them if you're not a dick. Sure. But be a dick if you want, Jordan Peterson. You're doing a good job so far has a very dangerous precedent. So it's one thing to tell people what they can't say. So for example, we have legislation making it illegal to do such things as deny the Holocaust. It's a completely different thing to demand that people use certain words when they're formulating their own ideas. What I find interesting, um, especially because he's Canadian and we're American, mm. he finds it okay to limit people's speech, for instance, on something like Holocaust denial. Whereas I don't. I don't, and I'm... As, <laughs> as harmful as I feel that can be. I'm as against Holocaust denial as you can probably be unless you were in the Holocaust. Right. And that, Well, I guess they're not that against it. They were in the Holocaust. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I don't understand the thinking here where he thinks that's the line that it's okay to limit speech. But for some reason, I yeah. don't understand. It's so I, weird. Like, like so as a free speech advocate, how do you, as a Jordan Peterson fan, I'm talking to you. How do you reconcile the two things he just said? Right. Are you a free speech advocate or are you a Jordan Peterson advocate? Because to me, that tells me he's not a free speech advocate. He's a I fucking hate trans people. He's an ideologue. I don't know if he hates trans people. <laughs> I don't want to say that. I'm saying he he doesn't think that um, trans pronoun usage or gender fluid pronoun usage deserves respect. Sure. As a new concept. Sure. Or a relatively new concept. I mean, it's been around for decades. But sure. In New York City, for example, there are now 31 protected gender identities, and I see no reason whatsoever why each of those gender identities can't de demand the use of their own pronoun. Absurd things like that have been happening on the University of Michigan campus, for example, where students have been given permission to tell faculty members and others what pronouns they're to be addressed by. It, it, it genuinely doesn't matter. It's not something that you will go to jail for or be prosecuted for or even get a fine for or even get yelled at for besides the person is there. Uh, University of Michigan just did it, did it as an inclusivity thing. Um, for instance, uh, I went to a bar recently and it said, uh, gender-neutral bathroom. You're not going to go to jail if you refuse to use the gender-neutral bathroom, but you will if you are a worker. You might not go to jail, but you might be sued uh, civilly if you refuse someone use of your bathroom. Sure. Does that make sense? It's very different. So he just again with the protected classes in New York City. Yeah, it's it's not prote it's not a protected class. They're, they're a just, protected they're, class. It's it, just it, not it's... In the way he thinks though. Yeah, they're not protected from you or, or speech. They're they're protected from discrimination based on those pronouns. That's very different language. It's di you saying to some like Jake. Let's yes. say you want to. Let's say you were transgender and you wanted to go by she. Okay. I can call you he in yes. Canada and not go to jail. Yes. I can and say, I... hey, Jake, you manly man, you. Hey, I, uh, you know, I appreciate that. I know the beard went. Uh, I prefer she. Hey, man. Fuck oh. that, man. Yeah. That's it's, fine. It's, it's, However, it's if, legal. If the situation goes, hey, I prefer to be called a woman, and then I punch him in the face because of that, that falls under the law because I'm yeah. attempting to harm someone. It also someone. might be considered a hate crime. Um, depending on, uh, how the jury goes. Yeah. So, it's not about the words you use, it's how you discriminate based on people, how, right. how they choose to label themselves. Now, some people have a visceral reaction to that being a hate crime, but not, like, punching a black person because they're black. That should be a hate crime. Right, I think bo both are. Assuming that's the motivation. Both are, right. So, if you burn, so, so, um, I don't know, I would consider that, uh, shooting... Um, the South Carolina church shooting yeah. that felt like a hate crime because he was he literally openly said like he wanted to was it Dylan Roof was that the kid no that was a different guy I, think. Yeah. Was it I can't Roof? even remember I know um, one of them had a manifesto that was like yeah, really racist he wanted, he wanted to create a race riot basically um, or you know race war 
Uh, that's a hate crime. If you do the same thing uh, to like a... Like the Pulse shooting, how about that? That was considered a hate crime as well. Um, they're, they're disparate, um, but similar in the way that they're both protected classes under the law. That's when it applies. It doesn't... Like, you could walk into that church and go, You N-words! Or you could walk into the club and go, You faggots! But, like, it's not... It's not illegal. It's just fucking rude. They could tell you to leave, and then if you yeah. don't leave, that's harassment, and the cops could pick you up for trespassing. Correct. But that's about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, it is different. They're multiplying rapidly out of control. So the law is bad from an ethical perspective. It's sloppily written. The solution that it imposes is practically untenable. For reference, here is literally underlined what changed in the, in the law. They just added the terms to allow the inclusivity of transgender people yeah. or whatever, people who describe themselves with different gender, whatever. Yeah. Is that untenable? Is that sloppily written? I feel like that, like, if that's sloppily written, the rest of that law is sloppily, sloppily written, and you also don't consider, like, whatever else is under there a protected class. Yeah. Which, maybe you don't, I'm just saying, like, Canada does. Like, the government does. And that's <laughs> not... And by the way, uh, from an American perspective, uh, uh, we have a pretty conservative government almost always. Yeah. We all still consider basically all these same things. I don't think we have gender pronouns no. specifically in the bill. But... Uh, like LGBT, at least. I don't even think that is. I don't think trans, but but gay is. Is it because certain states, I think, have laws where you can still? Oh, that might be that might be the state thing. Maybe it's not federal. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's 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 just one of those things. Like Americans in general feel pretty pretty much on board with this, and we're we have fifty percent of the people that just are your fans. Um, well, I'd like to encourage people struggling with this to be kind as their first impulse. Um, I don't call somebody Julie if they prefer to be called Jordan. Yeah, well, kindness is the excuse that social justice warriors use when they want to exercise control over what other people think and say. No, you're just an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Now, I will say, uh, uh, there are, we don't jump into this very often. We might no. have to with the Jordan Peterson stuff, just inherently. But, um, there are... SJW things um, on the very far left in America sure. uh, that I don't agree with, absolutely. And I think that it's very easy not to agree with people. Um, but they're not writing legislation. Most of the time, those are people that are like, you shouldn't be able to say faggot. And it's like, well, I think you should be able to. I just think if you call someone that, like, it's probably not going to be great for you socially in that area because most people are are just they we're past that part where it's a pejorative uh, that that is like like you know oh that's gay you know what I mean like I grew up in the 90s I remember that no one really says that anymore I think middle schoolers still do but they're middle schoolers uh, well when I was uh, when I taught no one really okay. said shit like that but maybe it changed I don't know maybe coming back um, but you know what I'm saying like there's <laughs> there is the SJWs that he's talking about and then there's most people who are just like I think uh, social justice has been so fucking, like, just ruined by, by those on the left and then, like, the lol cows and then, and then those on the right that constantly say that buzzword. Like, so people who want, uh, basically social equality or at least striving for social equality, um, there's lots of really reasonable ones. Lindsay Ellis, for example, is often considered an SJW. I, have, I, feel, I find her very reasonable. I find Harris, H-bomber guy, extremely reasonable. Um, there's plenty of, of these people that I, I consider, um, I'm fans of them, um, but also there's people um, that aren't for that, like Jeff Holliday or, or Logic, um, uh, even Armored Skeptic, uh, although he was wrong about this C-16 bill. Sorry, Greg. Uh, but Logic already did that, so that's fine. Um, you know, there are people on both sides that are great and really reasonable, and there's a good discussion to be had in the middle there. Jordan Peterson is not one of those people. And uh, it just it, it irritates me when this buzzword is used instead of the actual topics. And that's why we stayed away from it for the most part. I'm glad we came in just with this Jordan Peterson stuff, because you won't hear us talk about it other than this. So, so you know, if we're bandying back and forth uh, our, our differences in values, I, I would say that the highest possible value is truth, and that the, one of the concomitants is that is that is that we need 
stringent protection for freedom of speech so that we can utter the truths that we see fit. Again, he's already said he's in favor of restricting speech for things like Holocaust denial, uh, stuff like that, inciting actual violence. So he's already agreed there is a line. Yeah. There is no point at which we he is saying free speech for every situation ever. At this point, we're just arguing where the line is. It's and Jordan this, Peterson's free speech, personally. Again, and let me remind you, this law has nothing to do with forcing you to do anything. No. This is a giant child saying, I don't want to change the way I do things because I'm the most important person in the room all the time. A very well-spoken child. Honestly... Word salad, word salad is not fucking well spoken. No, Have but he you... knows big words. Vocabulary words. He told words. me to clean my room, bucko. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. And I think that that's a, a value that's much higher than, than kindness, for example. There's lots of situations in life where, where kindness in the immediate present is not a, the appropriate way to, to react at all. Okay, I, I tend to agree, but like... I don't see how that applies right. to calling someone by a pronoun they don't want. It doesn't. That, it doesn't. It's not like you're like, <laughs> that person who's living their life openly as a woman despite them uh, being born biologically male. Me calling them sir today, that'll set them straight. Is that the thought process? Right, like, oh, they'd have a ding-ding. I'm... That's the truth, okay? But but is kindness is kindness really not more important in that situation? I'm trying to find. It's not even about. I don't even think it's true. It's arguing about the semantics of what you mean by truth. The truth is that that person might have the genitalia of a biological male. But we're not talking about their biological sex. We're clearly talking about how they choose to live their life. And gender dysphoria and body dysmorphia in general are known and studied things in the psychological community. This is not new. And the way that they treat that is by allowing people who are transgender, who have gender dysphoria, yeah. to live their life as the gender that they see themselves right. as. And There's I nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't hurt you. So I, in what universe do you think going against that and going against what the entire psychological community has been saying for quite a while about these things. Look at the DSM-5. I'm just saying, <laughs> what, at what point do you have to look at yourself and say, no, I'm just going to be an asshole today because I can't be fucked to change my mind about something. Get over yourself. But so, for example, when um, you discipline children, you often hurt their feelings in the short term so that they can learn to behave properly in the medium to long term so that their lives go well. People on the social justice warrior side of the equation are motivated only by kindness when they're also clearly motivated by power is something I find completely untenable. Is it so difficult to remember a pronoun? You remember somebody's first name, you remember their telephone number. It's I don't very, remember very people's first names that... very easily and I don't remember their telephone numbers very easily. And when I see a stranger, I call them by the pronoun that seems to be in accordance with their presented appearance. So, do you understand understand how like where a period should be he puts a comma instead like are, are you are you seeing that yet if, if you're uninitiated in the Jordan Peterson this is a really really good introductory course which is why we chose this video it's he says so much without really saying anything basically that came came down to one sentence I don't want to spend the energy to be polite period he also thinks transgender people are apparently children, or at least metaphorically. Right, like, <laughs> we have to treat them how to behave? They're adult people, yeah. assuming they are adults. Right. I... Now, well, uh, there's, there's, there's whole separate debates you can have about uh, transgenderism and when's the right time to, you know, physically alter a person, maybe go on hormones, whatever. That's all separate. This is just about pronouns. I, I'm just going to call you your pronoun. I just don't care. I, I, I care so much more about not having an argument with you than I do about what I'm comfortable with. I don't even understand the mindset to cause an argument. If someone came up to me and was like, I was like, hey, how you doing, man? And they're like, oh, can, I go by she. I'd be like, oh, okay. Right. The only time I understand when someone uh, like Jordan Peterson is like gets mad is when like, Oh, hey, how you doing, man? They go, I'm a woman! Like, okay. Right, well, okay. that's Jordan Peterson on the other side. Right, that's that's literally just the opposite of the same coin. So yeah, calm down. We're all just people trying to do our best. And I promise you, most people uh, want to be polite. And, and this guy is changing um, 
sadly, young a lot of young men's specifically men, a lot of young men's minds on, on how to act, and it's it's kind of it's shitty. Yeah. That's you they being appear lazy, that Jordan. That's you being lazy. I think there's a very high value that we should also be aiming for in addition to truth. I think that we should be aiming for pluralism, recognizing more than one set of fundamental principles, fostering independent cultural traditions of minorities, and being willing to share power with people who are different than you. I agree that he's being lazy. <laughs> like, okay, but, but we just talked about that. Like, of course, you would immediately assume, most likely, yep. based on someone's outward expression, what their pronoun is. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay to, to get it wrong. I just I just don't understand why you would protest after someone said, oh, no, you know, um, you know I, they is fine for me. Okay. Well, like, where is the argument there? I have... It's, it's genuinely... It's either lazy or mean. It can't be. It can't be neither. I don't it could probably be both. It can't be neither. My my refusal to prono to use pronouns because left wing a activists want me to use them has nothing to do with whether or not trans people are having difficulties in society. It directly contributes to that. You are one of the problems in society that they are dealing with. Like what? It, and and promoting it in your book means you are actively that thing you said you just were not. Jordan Peterson. I, I, he sounds like a man who desperately tries to follow the A to B of the logical things, but, like, he ignores it when it makes him creeped out or, or like, ooh, that could be wrong, I can't sell a book on that, like... You are that. I've had many letters of support from trans people, and, and they tell me that the trans uh, activists don't support them, and most trans people Jordan, actually wanted to be referred to as he or she. Just they weren't my friends. Just because you know a few people, just because you've talked yeah, to I a didn't few know trans them. people, you, you don't know the trans community like the trans community does. Okay, he does this a lot. Um, in fact, could you, could you, we're going to get into this next time fully, hmm. but there's a little bit in the overture introduction of his book um right at the beginning where he just brags about like views on cora <laughs> he does this kind of shit all the time he'll take again it, it's it, it's a conservative thing it's it's a religious thing usually and i believe jordan peterson is religious i don't know if it's in the classical sense but you'll you'll get it over time yeah um where they often try to to use anecdotes as evidence and use for street cred he will do this constantly yeah. so I don't know why he thinks this is a good tactic. It's not one that works on me as a person that deals with that with Christian apologists all the time. It's not good. He did a debate with Matt Dillahunty, friend of the show. Love you, Matt. Uh, that, uh, I mean... You just bragged. You just did that, the that, thing. That, that, uh, that Matt... I know. That was the joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, where Matt did a very, very good job at, a, at addressing parts of this. Yeah. And... So just read the excerpt real quick. It's just... Soon after, I answered another question. What are the most valuable things everyone should know? I wrote a list of rules or maxims, some dead serious, some tongue-in-cheek. Be grateful in spite of your suffering. Do not... Th do not do things that you hate. Do not hide things in the fog, and so on. The Quora readers appeared pleased with this list. They commented on it and shared it. They said things as, I'm happy and definitely printing this list out, keeping it as a reference. Simply phenomenal. And you win Quora. You can just close the site now. Jordan, buddy. Like, if we, if, if, if we based uh, our, our own worth on, on positive comments... We would rule the fucking world. You guys are fucking sycophants. I love you. But you're dirty, dirty sycophants. I'm betting on the comments on this video, a lot of them won't be. <laughs> well, now they fell into that trap, didn't they? Hmm. Smarter than you. 4D chess. The, the trans activists aren't, um, aren't proper representatives of the trans community because they haven't been elected by the trans community. They're, Nobody elected they're noisy. you either, Jordan. You could say that about literally any group of activists in Maybe. any community. Or Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X were not elected to be people who talked in favor of civil rights. Neither was Jordan Peterson. Yeah. I mean, it works both ways. I... <laughs> I, I just don't know how you can how you can. He's one of the least self-aware people I think I've ever seen in my life, and that's pretty shocking based on what we've seen on this show. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. 
And so I'm not taking... But I'm Professor... Professor Peterson, let me jump in there, though, because we have seen an evolution of language. Legislation or not, there are words that have evolved. We don't use, for example, I'm Asian. I would bristle if someone called me Oriental. It's a really, really good example, and I don't know why Jordan Peterson doesn't hear this or listen. Because he still thinks the law is about forcing him to do something when it's not! Or maybe he wants to... to order an oriental wife off the internet. That sounds like a Jordan Peterson thing. He but cleaned his room, he got his house in order, he stood up straight and he goes, click, based and on, he bought himself a wife. Based on the description of his bedroom from that, this that's article. That's what I'm saying. Like, how he acts makes me think he's going to order a wife at some point. Yeah, he's got a weird neck beard room, and that's coming from me. Check this out. I shaved mine. They neck beard as fuck. This dude's more of a neck beard than me. He does have a beard now. Eh, sounds like Kermit, though. <laughs> I believe that this legislation is extraordinarily dangerous, and there's other elements of it, too, that we haven't even got to in our society yet, like the protection for gender expression. And as far as I can tell, gender expression is best summarized in, in a single word. Fashion. No. Because it's the way that you present yourself. In, in public with your clothing and your manner of dress. The legislation that we are bringing forth with Bill C-16 and that's already in place in places like Ontario it makes uh, fashion criticism something akin to a hate crime. That's not what it says. <laughs> Even if you're a Jordan Peterson fan, how can you listen to him say something like that and not cringe and say, oh Jordan, no. It's so not at all the point. What a joke of an argument that is, oh, because that uh, people are... All it is saying is you are not allowed to discriminate against someone because they were born biologically male, but they decide that they want to present as female. That's all it's saying. And if you have a problem with that, then I have a problem with you. You're an asshole. I, you, you, can't, you can't fire someone because they look like a man and wear a dress. Look like what you consider to be a man and wear a dress, that is. Like, that's, that's really what this is. Sure, fashion, we've used that example because it's the easiest identifier, but that's not even it. You could, like, like women wear pants nowadays. Women wear t-shirts and pants. Uh, if they have short hair, but you think maybe they have soft features and, and, and breasts so they look like a woman. I mean, it's not fashion at that point. It's literally just their actual gender identity that you're mistaking, and that's okay. You'll be corrected, and then please use the thing. Like, oh, that's, that's, that's... Formerly Jane, now Shane, and wants to be known as he or, you know, him. Like, that's fun. What's you, wrong with that? You know, the thing is, too, it's funny because I said this on Twitter, too. There are things that when we started this show, there are things I've said on this show that I wouldn't say today because I've changed my worldview on certain yeah. things. It seems like people like Jordan Peterson and people who follow this line of thinking, they're incapable or unwilling probably a combination of the two, of changing their, wor their worldview. And when they're confronted with something like someone saying, oh, no, can you please call me she? I, I'm actually transgender or whatever. Um, then it's like they're unable to say, okay, I was wrong, ergo I will change. Instead, they take it as like, an attack on themselves. Yeah. It's bizarre. It's a weird egocentric worldview that I am incapable of viewing. It's it, just weird. It, it, every time someone says liberal snowflake and then they bitch about stuff like this, it it the, the hypocrisy just drips oh, the, out of their face. The projection is astounding. It's crazy. And because there's been so much noise about the identity component of this, we haven't even talked about gender expression. And the idea that referring to someone by the pronoun of their choice is going to radically improve their status in society or their mental health is a completely unproven assumption. It will, won't have the opposite effect. I mean, it, it will make people feel more accepted in, in their own skin. They have, most likely, body dysmorphia. Like, like it's, a, it's a condition. You are helping them cope. By being polite to them and acting like they're a person with feelings. That's that's so beneficial for society. And you know what the thing is, too, what pisses me off? He is a professor of psychology. He should understand the psychological importance of validation and yeah. how damaging it can be to someone to feel invalidated, especially constantly on a day-to-day -day basis. Which, by the way, his entire book is about validating... Young men. Young men... <laughs> That require it. He literally cries 
uh, on, on streams constantly about young men not being treated correctly. And sometimes, maybe they're not treated correctly. But, like, it doesn't mean that, like, they're the only ones that need to be for society to work. It's so bizarre how there's, like, it, honestly, young white men are his protected class. It's bizarre. It's fucking weird. Like, I agree some, like, we were talking about men's rights activists, sure. and I, I cringed a little bit. Some men's rights things are real, for sure. And you talked about, like, you know, suicide, suicide rights, rights and, and, and the way we talked about that icky word, toxic. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it's, like, sometimes that's correct. Like, men men uh, in a lot of um, jurisdictions, um, like, especially with, like, child custody, men, men often get uh, improperly placed in that. Um, the, the way we deal with, like, um, um, oh, fuck, I, I mean, there's, there's just so many things, um, like military service or the, the expectation that, um, men should always lead in situations or men should make more money than their, um, female counterparts or, and I'm gonna talk about wage gap, I'm literally talking about this pressure on me to have more money than my girlfriend I mean, I don't feel that, but I mean, societally, societally like, that's it. like if a man doesn't make as much money, he's like somehow emasculated and so like these are actual things that I agree we should discuss. And in and, and like parts of this book, probably uh, and, and parts of his fan base probably have real genuine gripes. But the way they go about solving them is so anti what you should be doing. It's they're exacerbating the problem. Really, it is. And it's it's harmful. And it's, oh, huh. I just, oh. I know. Legislation also requires that the university made clear their concordance with that assumption on my part by mentioning in the letter that asked me to silence myself that I'm required to act in accordance with the provisions of the Ontario Human Rights Act. And so the university knows full well that the legislation does precisely what I suggest it does. He is conflating the university's policies, the new university policy as far as treating transgender students equally and allowing mm. them to be treated uh, and called by their preferred pronouns. He's you mean with respect? He's conflating that with C-16. And yeah, the university probably made a mistake too. They shouldn't have said to him, this is because of this law. But the fact is, it's just the university's policy at this point. And as a professor, if he doesn't like that, he's free to leave the university. And at this point, I don't know if he's, he's still there, I, I assume. Think, yes. But the thing is... <laughs> That's not what the bill is about. Just because the school misinterpreted it doesn't mean that's what the bill is. He's right. using a literal, like, straw man that was presented to him, maybe by the school, by misinterpreting it, and deciding that that's what the bill actually says instead of saying, oh, the school made a mistake, I, I we need to talk about this. It's not even like... It's not even like he's just saying we need to talk about this. He's just saying no fuck this bill because fuck you. Do you know what it is? It's the school protecting themselves from liability in case... Yeah there's a frivolous lawsuit or something like that or maybe an actual hate crime but i doubt sure. it i doubt it would happen but if the if the university itself adapts its policy codes to legislation that happens all over the world by the way in in places that have like you know good legal teams um and the policy can overstretch what the law actually says and often does to protect themselves legally the, the, I can't imagine that the University of Toronto in general is super worried about Jordan Peterson, the man, committing a hate crime. No. What they are concerned about is not just Jordan Peterson, this went to all faculty, um, is, 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 I'm sure part of it is probably altruistic because um, to, uh, co just colleges in general are pretty liberal, um, and I think that's fair yeah. to say um so i'm sure a lot of people in that boardroom or whatever were very much like well i think this is important to add to the policy yeah. and it makes I sense it's 2018 I don't, it's current year i don't disagree either no i don't either like it's it's you know it's 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 like not someone said the word jigaboo on twitter the other day Whoa. i know no like it's literally akin to like hey maybe don't say weird shit like that you fucking racist it's, 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 you know, misgendering someone is kind of like that. Not, I don't think to the social weight yeah. it, that it is, um, although to a trans person it might feel that way. Um, I don't think, you know, but... <laughs> the fact is this shit's happening whether you like it yeah, or not. Yeah, and, 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 and by the way, it's not a bad thing. I don't no. think including people for who they are and express is in any way 
detrimental to society as a whole. I'm trying to think of a way... I'm desperately trying to be on, like, play devil's advocate. Like, what's the argument against using proper pronoun usage with someone who is gender fluid or otherwise? There isn't one, and I'll explain. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's using this and framing this as if the bill is it's about free speech. free speech, even though it has nothing to right. do with that, because he has he knows he has no leg to stand on if he actually argues from the viewpoint he actually has, which I am assuming is, I don't like trans people, I don't want to use the proper pronouns. But he knows he can't just outright say that. Again, remember, in the book there was a quote where he's like, if people knew what I was actually teaching, I'd get in a lot of trouble. Right. He knows what he's doing. He, and he's profiting off of it. He makes a lot of money on Patreon. Yeah, like, isn't it like $8,000 a month? No, it's no. like $80,000 no, no, a month no. or it's something like that. Money. It's absurd. It's a lot of money. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, good for him. People, um, people who don't want to treat other people with basic human decency. Yeah. And who are reactionary and like to get on free speech bandwagons without actually looking into the issues to see if it actually does have anything to do with free speech. They sure do like them. By the way, I'm a free speech advocate. Same. If you're someone who supports this, you are hurting the message of free speech because this has nothing to do with free speech. Every time anyone brings up free speech now, it people automatically connect it with, like, Nazis because so many assholes have gone to free speech when they yeah. don't have a leg to stand on with their actual argument because they know it's reprehensible socially. They just say, well, the thing I'm saying might be reprehensible, but I have the right to say it. You do. No one is arguing you don't. There's... Well, some people are. Some people are. But those but are the people they latch on to. But that's not the discussion. To misrepresent the actual discussion. Right. That's not the discussion we're having in society as a whole, and you know that. Be honest. It's not written precisely in Bill C-16. It's written in the Ontario Human Rights Code. And if you read the Ontario Human Rights Commission policies on such things, you'll see very rapidly utilization of preferred pronouns is part of the legislative package. If you read the legislation, Jordan, you will find out that they're actually called correct pronouns. There's, there's no preference about this. Yeah. Valid. These uh, free speech laws were actually never intended to be used as accountability shields. I'm perfectly willing to be held accountable for my actions, and the university has already uh, indicated the seriousness with which they view my actions. Free speech laws are there because we use free speech to um, identify problems in our society, generate solutions to the problems, and then reach a consensus. The consensus in your country is that the, this should have been legislated, however. Yep. So freedom of speech is actually the, is, is protection for the mechanism by which our individuals and society properly orient themselves across time. Well, it's the fundamental method by which our societies manage to maintain the stability that they do maintain. If your free speech was under attack, Jordan Peterson, I would, I would, would you be on that news show? Would you have a fucking book? No. How do people not see he's using this to make money? And right, because he would be in jail because his free speech, he was anti-free speech, like, you know what I'm saying? His free speech would be a crime, and he wouldn't be published by, I don't know, what is that, Penguin? It's, pe it's, a, it's a branch of Penguin. But nonetheless, it is published. Uh, in, that's, Random House Canada. Yeah, which is a subset of Penguin right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Penguin Random House. Yeah. Um, I just... You're not being curtailed, my my friend. Um, what 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 is happening is is you're teaching um, relatively harmful attitudes uh, to young men about how to live their lives, about how to treat other people, and I know you said you were you felt like you were accountable, but you don't you're not really accountable. No, the book is almost a treatise on how to <laughs> on how, how to, to shirk responsibility. It's not even that. It's not that because he talks about things like superficially like stand up straight, straight, clean your room, but he talks a lot about um and again we'll talk about this we're going to go chapter by chapter. Yeah. Um but he talks <laughs> about how people in society, it's clearly targeted at men. He says people. He uses men and women, but it's pretty clear he's writing for an audience of men, even if he doesn't realize he's doing well, he so. he brings it up constantly. Um, uh, <laughs> it's almost like he targets these people who feel bad about themselves, mm -hmm. and then he teaches them a system in which they can, instead of actually improving their lives, looking at themselves, self-reflecting, and saying, is there something wrong with me? Am I maybe an asshole? Do right. I maybe need to be more social? Do I maybe need to... Instead, it creates... Scapegoats. Like, not It creates scapegoats, and it also 
it creates a system by which you can grade yourself on a curve and just feel good for doing things you should already be doing, like cleaning your room. It creates a system in which you don't have to strive to try and be something. You are great by just the fact that you are masculine and trying to endeavor to increase your level in the social hierarchy, which he talks about a lot, and we'll talk and about also, that bullshit. Like the fact that like a lot of his um and I and I know this for a fact because he says it, um, you know, I have a I'll have a talk and a bunch of people will stay after. Um, like they're like their old relationships with women, like they're owed not only that, but monogamy with women, but with marriage with women, with children with women, they're owed these things uh, societally, and he brings up several reasons to do so. Um, recently, his main reason not to, you know, ha you know, to have men be single and to force monogamy is so that we're not violent. Because if my balls are full, I'm going to run a car into a crowd of people. You hear that, lady? And again... My balls are full! Empty them! Make me a sandwich! And She'll clean my room for me. And again, this has to do with perpetuating very, very negative stereotypes about men. And this makes people who maybe do have, for whatever reason, maybe they do have a serious mental illness. Maybe they just have not been socialized very well. But for some reason, maybe they do feel violent and want to lash out at people because of their lack of contact with uh, the opposite sex for some mm -hmm. reason. Um, it normalizes the idea that that violence is natural. It makes it seem right. like... Right. Like all men, all men are violent I inherently... Right. And instead of seeking out help and maybe saying, hey, maybe like I have an anger issue or my relationship with women in general is oh. very healthy and I need to seek help about that. And don't get me wrong, testosterone can lead to, to uh, aggression. Sure. And that, that's true. I mean, that's just scientifically factual. But that doesn't mean that like if, if, if I haven't like gotten my balls emptied by a lady recently, a monogamous relationship lady, yeah. that I'm going to go on a shooting spree. That's not why it's 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 a scapegoat to avoid the other discussions like I don't know uh, gun control, psychological services, healthcare, poverty, education. It's it's literally all just like oh those feminists. And he even and the things he brings up people being left young people, men and women, but of course he his audience is mainly men, but sure. all of us. I feel like a lot of us are feeling left behind by society right now. Sure. Our institutions are failing us in a lot of ways. But Jordan Peterson is pointing out these problems and not providing actual solutions. He's just saying, this is the way it is. Man up. Be more of a man. Try and one-up other men about being men and raise your status in the social hierarchy and you'll be fine. It has nothing to do with actually looking at our society recognizing problems and attempting to change them it's him saying let's go back to old ways yeah. and double down on things that already haven't worked it's unhealthy it's unethical and i think he knows what he's doing it's disgusting well professor peterson we do want to thank you we're sorry we're out of time here but i want to thank both of you for joining us today that is the university of toronto professors jordan peterson and aw pete so yeah, uh, that's sort of an overview of how Jordan Peterson tends to handle himself in interviews and sort of situations in general. Jeez, uh, I don't even know. The book itself isn't about transgender or the pronouns or anything. Yeah. It's more just generally about his philosophy of life and how he Indeed. believes. But I think, I think this is a good window into kind of like, because this is like the moment that sparked Jordan Peterson and kind of like who he is today as far as like in the public eye and kind of what he touts and who who like responds positively to him. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you're going to see a lot of this. We might do other interviews as well um, where we highlight some stuff uh, kind of to provide other context. Uh, but we're doing this whole thing. We're doing this whole book. So every episode is going to be one chapter. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long those episodes will be, but they will be that. Yeah. So next time we're going to start with... Uh... What Peterson likes to call, can you see that? No. The overture, but fuck that, it's an introduction, you pompous cunt. Yeah. Don't fucking overture. It's a book, you asshole. He likes to use big words to make himself sound smart. He, it's it's pseudo-intellectual path. He's just a piece of shit. Anyway, so, I can Did use... Did you feel good? A little I cathartic? Can, I can use words, too. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. So, if you want, you can always follow us on Twitter, at PapaBirdJake. You can follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded, where he's been talking about Jordan Peterson all week. Um, you can also uh, subscribe to the channel. 
Uh, make sure you click the bell or whatever. I don't know anymore. Just just try hard. Um, <laughs> try hard to do it. But we would do, really do appreciate your subscription. Uh, I'm sure you're going to want to be here for that. So if you're not, you should. Yeah, and share this video so a lot of people can see this series and see why Jordan Peterson is kind of an idiot. Right. And also, uh, you can go to our Patreon where we slowly chip away at surmounting Jordan Peterson. It won't ever happen. <laughs> we, we're, we're just... We're, first of all, we don't suck your dicks nearly hard enough no. for that to work uh, or, or uh, fillet your um, lady parts. But uh, it, it, it helps the show a lot. Also, if you're a fan of uh, Dungeons & Dragons, um, those of you who don't clean your room... Um, <laughs> Uh, we're, we do a we do a uh, campaign and uh, we're trying to fund streaming it because we get asked about it a lot, but it costs a lot of money, so we need some cameras and shit and uh, mics and all that stuff. So, and I need a new computer for it. So, if you are a fan of that kind of thing and a fan of us, and you would like to see that, please consider uh, a one dollar or higher Patreon thing. It would help uh, just a fuckload. So until next time, I'm here we go. I'm Jake. This one's gonna hurt a lot. And we've read most of the Bible. <sighs> you ever just, just rip off cognitive behavioral therapy and then pretend it's an original idea but include a lot of really bad backwards ideas and lobster comparisons? Me? No. Yeah, me either. I know someone who has, though.